Kyle, uh, before we go, I want to uh, highlight a blog that you wrote that has recently gone up on the Concord Coalition website. And it uh, basically deals with the question, will the next generation uh, have a self-fulfilling prophecy? You were actually referring to your own generation, um, Gen Z. And what were you getting at in that uh, in that blog? Yeah, speaking of, of long-term planning, um... I think I, I was spurred to write this blog when I was in one of my graduate school classes and we were talking about the confidence that Social Security will be in some positive form by the time we get to my generation, Gen Z or maybe even millennials, gets around to accessing those benefits. And the picture isn't even clear for you know what benefits will look like a decade from now, much less three to four decades from now. Um, I think it's really interesting to see the economic outlook that sits in front of us for the short, medium, and long term uh, from the perspective of my generation and also the millennial generation who are now mainly uh, uh, composing the workforce. Wages, uh, when they're adjusted for inflation, are down from our baby boomer counterparts at the, the same period of, in their lives. Um, things are rising in cost, and there's really no... Uh, future where we see that changing in the at least in the immediate term. Um, so with this uh, troublesome economic outlook, it's really concerning to see how is our generation going to respond um, in the way they act, the way they work. We have a demographics issue in this country, and if you don't see a positive future to start a family or positively contribute to society. Uh, it gets really difficult to continue the the benefits train rolling and ensuring that people are getting what uh, we've kind of used as a fair share uh, throughout you know the past fifty to sixty years of this country. So we're um, mostly concerned about how that uh, economic pessimism and poor economic outlook is going to affect us going forward, and how is Congress going to respond to that to try and spur some kind of movement so we can harness the individual optimism optimism that does exist in a lot of uh, Gen Zers and millennials. We just have to make sure we tap into it and don't lose it uh, before it's it's too late. I think that's really one of the key questions facing our nation right now, because, you know, we, we uh, always rely on the next generation to uh, to help, uh, you know, to grow and prosper. And, uh, you know, uh, we uh, want to put them in the best position to um to, to do those things. And, you know, you can't have a generation that's kind of, you know, turned off or lost or something and, and just assuming that things aren't going to be good. So, I mean, I think that older generations need to work with the younger generations because uh, we have a different sort of a situation now than we've ever had before. I mean, I, I look at the prospects of today's generation and, you know, there are a lot of problems facing your generation, Kyle, that didn't face mine. And uh, I think we just need to deal with it. The demographics is one of them and, and just the, the debt situation that we have in the country. So, you know, wh how can we respond to it fiscally and, and economically with the demographics that we have?